Today's video is a recap of our July 2021 visit to the lovely English city of Bristol. I'll share with you the unexpected beauty we discovered in the cathedral, city streets, neighborhoods, and this famous suspension bridge. Of course, I'll also share with you the delicious food we ate, the animals we encountered, and perhaps even a few magenta flowers. But stay tuned until the end for all the drone photography of this fascinating bridge. Bristol is a prominent city in the southwest of England, not far from Bath and about an hour south of where we live in Cheltenham. We came to Bristol to have a meetup with a friend who we met through YouTube who is a fellow content creator. Her name is Kelly and her channel name is Maysam Adventures. Here we are posing for a photo and trying not to mind the rather sinister looking seagull over our shoulder. We met up for lunch at Las Iguanas, a Latin food restaurant. We had some really delicious food, including cheese and mango empanadas, dadinos, which are Brazilian cheese cubes with sticky chili jam, which were delicious, a fiesta salad for something healthy, and a banana sticky toffee pudding. Unfortunately, the dish that was my favorite, the dadinos, I don't think they have it on the menu anymore. What a pity. I've actually been craving those for a year and tried to visit the Las Iguanas in Newcastle last week to see if I could get some there, but no luck. The one disappointing thing about our meal that day was the pudding. As I detailed in my sticky toffee pudding video, this particular version was not the best and did not live up to the menu description. But check out my STP video if you haven't seen it yet for some other really stellar puddings. We often visit a city specifically because we want to visit the cathedral. For example, next month we are headed to Wells. But in this case, it was the opposite. We went to Bristol to return a purchase to Ikea and to meet up with my friend Kelly. The fact that there was a cathedral across the road was just a coincidence. Ian resisted, but I persuaded him to make time for a quick stop, and we were both so glad we did. It was a beautiful building. The thing that captivated me immediately were the striped columns, the pillars of pale gray and lovely blue stone with the ornamentation at the tops, were simply breathtaking, all rising to a gorgeous display of vaulting overhead. It's noteworthy that the nave and the aisles are the same height, which is uncommon. This glorious specimen of medieval architecture was built in the 1100s. First, it was an Augustinian abbey, and then in the 1530s, the nave was being refurbished. Of course, this was a pivotal time in English cathedral history. Henry VIII might have destroyed the abbey like so many others that were demolished during the dissolution of the monasteries. But thankfully, this building was spared and became a new foundation cathedral and rededicated. At the time, Bristol was the most important trading city in England beyond London. The intricately designed choir screen is from 1542 and is one of the most lovely I've seen. It was gifted to the cathedral soon after it received its cathedral status. Similarly, the altar screen is extremely ornate and breathtaking as well. The choir is absolutely stunning. Construction on this area started in 1298 and the magnificent wooden carved seats are from the 1500s. The beautiful timber organ casing is from the late 1600s. This lady chapel in Bristol Cathedral is spectacular. The Lady Chapels are dedicated to the Virgin Mary and similar to Gloucester Cathedral, this one has some of the most amazing stained glass and embellishments of the entire cathedral. So when you go in Gloucester Cathedral, all of the beautiful stone embellishments are unpainted. So what's noteworthy here in Bristol is that you see the very colorful painting as intended, but then over on this side of the cathedral, you see the same embellishments around the tombs do not have the painting. And it just shows how that vivid color really enhances the architectural details. As usual, there were countless tombs in the cathedral. 
Here are a few that caught my attention. I like to observe that the knight figure has crossed legs, which might have meant he went on a crusade, though some scholars say it is symbolic of the crucifixion. I'm also intrigued by the animal symbols at the feet. They are meant to represent virtues, such as loyalty, fidelity, or bravery. The tombs of the local lords are always the most ornate and elaborate. I enjoy studying them and learning about their families. This tomb from 1558 is unusual because, unlike most of the others that show people dressed in finery, this basically shows a skeletal figure. It's a little bit gruesome. After visiting the cathedral, we explored the grounds surrounding it. One thing I noticed right away was the unicorn standing atop the end of City Hall. As my friend Eliz from the Means to Travel YouTube channel mentioned when she was in the same spot, I wondered why it was there, since the unicorn is the animal symbol for Scotland. But apparently Bristolians are obsessed with unicorns, as well as mermaids, more about that later, and other mythical creatures. My favorite spot adjacent to the cathedral is this statue of Queen Victoria on College Green. It was placed here in 1888 by Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor, Duke of Clarence and Avondale. Now it's time to explore the city in our car and on foot. We drove around the city streets, which reminded me a bit of San Francisco in that they were often steep and windy. Also like San Francisco, there are quite a few colorfully painted townhouses throughout the streets of Bristol. The color choices were often interesting. Of course, I was a fan of this magenta purpley door on this home. The Georgian architecture around the city center and Bath Stone reminded me of the nearby famous Regency era city of Bath, as well as our home away from home, Cheltenham. In addition to the center of the city, we traveled through this opulent area of homes on the outskirts of Bristol. I was fascinated by the stately homes and the curious imagery that adorned many of the buildings and gates. Lots of mermaids and other mythical creatures. And this crest, which sported the Latin motto, which translates to, unwilling to endure poverty. I'll let you muse on the possible reasons that can be found in this neighborhood. After crossing the bridge over the Bristol Avon, we had a wee wander around the wooded neighborhoods on the other side of the river. We saw some lovely big homes there as well, and even more mermaid imagery. Of course, it wouldn't be a Magenta Otter Travels vlog if we didn't meet some cute animals and photograph magenta flowers, and look out for quirky things to observe along the way. This is an interesting way to recycle your trainers. And some of these are very moss covered. This thing in the parking structure is totally cracking me up. It looks like a wee little ladder for a Barbie, a hamster, I mean, a rat. It is so tiny and there's a little like manhole cover down there and then at the top it is so funny if you are enjoying this video please don't forget to click the like button as it really helps get this video shared with other viewers i'll also need to stick with my magenta otter principles and show you the yummy food we ate for dinner for a light and healthy dinner before driving back home, we decided to stop by this Mediterranean food place called Eat a Pita. The food was fabulous. Literally the best falafel ever. It was served in what they call a falafel in a box. All the salads and sides were so fresh and tasty. I enjoyed every bite. And to round off our delicious and healthy meal, we had a freshly squeezed carrot and orange juice that was just perfect. I highly recommend this place. They have several locations around Bristol. We successfully avoided marauding seagulls enough to enjoy a lovely meal at an outdoor table. Speaking of seagulls, let's head to the harbor for a moment. Originally, Bristol Harbor was subject to tidal fluctuations of 30 feet between high and low tide. At low tide, ships would run aground and be stranded in the harbor. The ability of ships to endure this abuse gave rise to the saying, ship shape and Bristol fashion. All this changed in 1809 when modifications were made to the harbor which prevented the tide from going out. 
This enabled the construction and docking of very large ships in the 19th century, such as the SS Great Britain, which can still be seen in the harbor today. Another ship found in the harbor is the Matthew, a replica of the ship which John Cabot used in his discovery of Newfoundland. The biggest reason Ian wanted to visit Bristol was to see the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which bridges the Avon River from the Clifton area of Bristol. It is one of Bristol's most recognized landmarks and a symbol of the city. The bridge is one of the most famous creations of civil engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Construction on the bridge was started in 1831, but it was not completed until after Brunel's death in 1864. One reason for the long build time was that the construction halted during the Bristol riots in 1831. The Clifton Observatory is perched atop the cliff overlooking the river gorge and the bridge. It was originally built as a windmill to grind corn and was converted to an artist studio and camera obscura in the 19th century after the sails of the windmill caught fire. Today, it is open to the public as a museum and viewing point of the Avon Gorge. I have upcoming videos sharing our visits to some spectacular places nearby in Somerset, such as Wells Cathedral and the National Trust properties of Tintsfield and Durham Park. So please be sure that bell icon is clicked when you subscribe so you'll know when I publish those. And to catch my video of the fabulous villages around Somerset, click here or on this playlist, which includes all my Somerset videos, including Dunster, with some amazing drone footage of the castle, and the gorgeous city of Bath. Thanks so much for watching, and do something good in the world today.